Hey guys, this is Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk, and today we're going to talk about Consequences by Aletha Romig. This book, in a couple words, like such sick brilliance. She is the master of plot twist. I don't think, I think this is categorized as some sort of romance, and let me tell you now, it's not. This is a psychological thriller, and I feel thoroughly mind-fucked after this book. So this girl, Claire Nichols, wakes up in this unfamiliar place that's really lavish, but it's a prison. So this man, Anthony Rawlings, kidnapped her and is keeping her there. He is a sick, twisted fuck. So what happens is she is there because they had a b twisted business agreement, and so she's there to pay off her debt. Not debt to him necessarily, though it is now. She had credit card debt, student loans, whatever. And he said, well, I paid it off, so you are going to pay me back. And so she has to stay there and she has to perform these sexual duties and it's rape. She wakes up bruised and it was awful and he has all these rules. And he says, there are consequences for every action. Some may be positive consequences and some may be negative consequences. You have to obey him. But if she doesn't follow his rules or hesitates or lies or anything, then she gets punished. The punishment can vary from weeks of isolation or he will just beat her. It is awful. Like, he does sick stuff to her. I was not prepared for this. He is not a monster with a heart of gold. He is Satan, okay? He is just evil incarnate. Claire is the queen of compartmentalizing everything. If it's a bad experience, she will literally put it in a folder in her head and just say, I can't think about that right now, it's too much. Because think about all the things that have happened to her. And it's just compartmentalizing everything so she can act fine with him because that's part of the rules. And then we start to think Stockholm's, but that is not what you think. Like I said, Aletha Romek is the master of plot twist. Expect nothing less than for a serious mindfuck, a nightly headache reading this, and then just the aftermath, when you're done, you're like, what? Like, you don't see the end coming, but the thing is, it's not just the end I'm talking about. There's kind of like how we have epilogues. Well, this is an afterword. It, just, it mentally sets you up for the next book. And if you guys want a little bit more of a hint and you're all analyzing like I am, do check out the cover. It relates to the story like you don't even know. It's not just the necklace that relates to the story, it's the whole cover. Is it just fate that they met? No, Anthony controls everything. He doesn't leave anything to chance. So he was meant to find her, meet her, kidnap her, rape her, and do all sorts of unspeakable things to her. It's all an elaborate web, and it is scary how many things twist and weave together. I'm gonna have a long session of theorizing at the end, BT dubs, guys. Yeah. So I'll see you guys later next time on Bookworms Talk when you have read it. It's a really good book. If you're looking for a romance, this isn't it. It's not erotica, it's not romance, it's none of the above. This is a psychological thriller, so don't go into it thinking that. Just go into it thinking your mind will just be blown at every corner. Yeah, so I'll see you guys later. Bye. Um. So Anthony fucking Rawlings. So when we're in the past, and he calls her at the Red Wing, and by the way, the name of that restaurant, questionable, huh. But when he called her, and she's like, did you forget something? He's like, yes, I forgot you. That should have been your first hint. <laughs> one of the more disturbing parts was that Anthony thought of everything. He wanted to make sure no one thought she was dead. So what did he do? Go to her apartment, get her computer, access her emails and her Facebook, and update things to show that she's still alive. That is the most disturbing part of it because it was so planned for him to think that kind of thing through. So when he took her to the symphony, how could you not try to escape? Okay, I understand this is survival. I would be probably a chicken and wouldn't try either. But at least like go to the ladies room and try to tell someone and be like, you need to be calm, but I'm giving you a message. Something, he can't control everybody. So the camera's in the house, you guys. That creeped me out more than the idea of the kidnapping. And it wasn't just her performing her sexual duties. It's just all the time, filming everywhere. There's some outside just watching all the time. So I had a moment where I was like, oh, Anthony, you're not so bad. I mean, I'm not forgetting everything that you did. But when she let her call her sister on her birthday and she didn't answer and he's like, he's trying to almost almost comfort her. He's like, well, maybe they went out for a movie. You, you can try again later. And he's trying to be nice about it. And I was like, the sick fuck cares. And I don't know how I feel about that. Because we do see in his head that he did kind of fall for her. But the thing is, okay, you were kind of captivated by the girl, but your plan, you still go through with it. About 116 pages in, 
there was a huge stepping stone for Tony because he doesn't apologize because we know that that means you're weak. That's what his grandfather taught him. But he apologizes to Claire. We were in his head and he's just like, I don't just want to control her, but I want to please her too. And I'm like, whoa, a new leaf may be wrong, wrong. Okay, so she does admit that maybe her feelings for him is Stockholm. I'm so glad that she acknowledged that because I was thinking this whole time, Stockholm, Stockholm, Stockholm. And I love that it was at least brought in. It's not necessarily true. I don't think after reading the book, I, when Tony beat her like crazy and she fell into the coma and he was there at her bedside and holding her hand. And I was like, why are you messing with my heartstrings? But then the doctor had her in a room alone. I'm sorry. You could tell him. I, you did, not even a hint. No, nothing. You couldn't have just been quiet and let him be suspicious. That would be something. No, you had to say everything was fine. Why? Because I was honestly thinking beforehand, okay, maybe Tony could change into a coma. Guys, I don't care if you change after you fall into a coma because they beat you like that. He could kill you. If that wasn't clear enough the first time, you thought isolation was the worst punishment. I'm starting to think these comas are pretty bad. I was livid when he called it an accident. An accident? She did not fall in the woods. You beat her to a pulp. That made me so mad. He likes that word, accident. Yeah, his parents had an accident. So did hers. They had an accident. So did she. It's all an accident. Wrong. The poison accident. I... But after the quote-unquote accident, he started asking her what she wanted. Not just what she wanted in general, but then what she wanted sexually and just other things. And so we started getting to the point where maybe, maybe, it's kind of like how we are in all these books with Christian Grey, how it takes the woman almost leaving for the guy to realize, oh, wow, I'm actually an asshole. I was doing something wrong. Hmm, I'm going to, you know, work on turning over the new leaf. And she would kind of play along with the whole, sure, it was an accident thing. He tried to take her out and she just starts screaming like, I remember everything, don't touch me, crying and in tears, and it was awful. But he was hurt by that, and then he would ask her permission for him to touch her. I mean, I was already a little bit conflicted in the story, a lot, let's not lie. And so we have choice A, freedom. Or we have choice B, marriage. Was that even a question? But then I started to see, after reading it, if she were to leave, nobody leaves Anthony Rawlings. That would have been her death sentence. But freedom, marriage, uh. When she was late getting back to the hotel in Rome, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be that tango, waltz, dance, two step back, one four, whatever that thing was. But he didn't freak out. And I was like, whoa, okay, that's, that's a good thing. Maybe, maybe he's changing. But that violent streak quickly came back. Uh, he slapped her for having a tone, a tone. And then he made her apologize for making him slap her. Like she actually asked for it. I'm a firm believer that everyone is a product of their surroundings and Anthony Rawlings is no exception. I mean, with a grandfather with that kind of influence over his life, it's kind of reasonable to see how fucked up he is. He basically became his grandfather. So Simon dies and I'm not necessarily surprised because no one gets in the way of Anthony Rawlings. And if this guy is a threat in any minute way, of course he will eliminate him because he didn't have power over his job. Let's just kill him, that's the next best thing. So Anthony's watched her for a while. When we first got to her apartment when he was getting all of her things out of there, you know, with her computer and everything, and he saw this picture of her sister and her at her sister's wedding. And I thought, the way it was phrased, was he there? Yeah. Also, her parents' funeral, he was there too. He has watched her for years. And I want to know what changed his mind at that point. He said, when he went there, he had this whole idea and then seeing her at the funeral changed his mind. What exactly was it? Was it the plan that happened? That was the change of plan? Or is it something that involves a second book? What was the original plan? I want to know these things. But then he goes and says, I need to keep working to be the man that Mrs. Johnson thinks I am. Why are you trying to confuse me? Okay, so when she decided to get into the Mercedes, I'm like, is driving really that important? Do you understand what he will do to you? And then she gets pulled over and we're like, oh fucking hell. He probably, you know, called the cops. Like, um, then they said, don't worry, your husband will probably live. And I'm like, what? What? What, ha what happened to Anthony? Exactly 11.15, he was poisoned. Oh my God, with the coffee that I thought was 
weird that he asked her to get it. Oh no, I want you to go get it. It was planned. I knew something was wrong. I, uh, <laughs> I mean the prenup, how he's like, no, I don't want to sign the prenup. Makes her look bad. Okay. That's one. John losing his license. Do you really think that was a coincidence? No, because that's who would represent her. He doesn't want someone that good because he realizes how good the guy is. So let's get rid of John out of the equation. And to the jewelry that he put out for her to wear that day made her look worse. And then changing her hair and telling her to shop and doing all these things and just everything. He made it look like she just became this socialite and she was a gold digger and it fit perfectly. It's just so brilliant and you can't help but be like, wow, that was really good. It's a good thing she learned to compartmentalize with Anthony because now she's in prison. There is no justice. None. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I was freaking out. I still can't really form words about that. I'm still freaking out. He sent her the clippings from the newspapers and stuff. Revenge. Guys, revenge. She will get revenge. You think, oh. So he definitely killed her parents, and it looks like he killed his, too. I mean, an accident? Are you really gonna use that term and then expect us not to think an accident is really him? But to kill your parents, he is another level of psychological fucked upery. Oh my god, the afterward. Not the other girl, not Sophia, not another girl to fuck up. Because her last name's Perk, and there's more plans! Not her! No, not- Claire was enough. Like, that, that was too much. Oh my god. And then I started thinking, what about Catherine? Did she know about this? She was always like, he's a good man. You don't understand. I've known him for a while. Is she part of this? I have just been a fit of what the fuck for like the past 24 hours. I didn't sleep at all. So I want to talk theories and possible spoilers because I have read non-spoiler reviews for Truth. But I mean, if people have read it, so the spoilers are going to be in there a little bit. And there will be a couple really big ones depending on how you view a spoiler. But I recommend if you don't want to know anything about truth for right now to leave because this could be a seriously big spoiler and I don't want you to be upset with me. So I'll see you guys later. Bye. Okay, so let's talk theories, guys. Catherine London. This is a big third in the book trilogy spoiler thing. Catherine's still in it. Catherine London. She's definitely a part of it. And this Derek guy, I think he's the unforeseen force that is working above all of them. And I'm really looking into analyzing the cover of truth because I think that this one was big puzzle piece right claire's part of the puzzle piece there's more the shadow and the thing in the back like it, it, it makes sense okay so i'm really reading into the cover of truth and it's chess and it's everything and she's just part of it and there's more and then there's someone else that's bigger and it's not just anthony and i heard that we'll probably not be so mad at anthony and he'll kind of redeem himself a little bit i'm okay with it now because it said something to the effect of it was the only way i could protect you by putting you in there in prison it makes sense I've been talking to uh, some people on private messages and stuff and we've been theorizing and whatnot and I've been looking on Goodreads not like I'm really crazy with all this like it's like mine just I, I don't think I've ever looked up so many reviews on the books because I want to piece things together that I might not have caught and then with Anthony does he really love her I mean could he have hinted at something and not used accident that would have been a big enough hint for us I mean is the grandpa not all, not dead because that could be something but I think it's something even bigger than that I think that Anthony and Claire are gonna either join forces to conquer this greater guy that is apparently this huge game it's not just them like you think it's Anthony and Claire and that's what it is and he has this whole thing with the families that fucked up his no it's bigger than that it's just a small piece in the game and they said this enemy is someone that neither of them had foreseen so that kind of pulls the grandpa thing out of the water for me but i mean the poison thing that was all to further his image when you look at it because then he's like well i'm gonna you know sell her things so that's gonna go to the taxpayers and i'm gonna do this and that makes me look like a good guy too and let's put her in a smaller not so high up kind of prison because I'm a good guy. He did this all to further himself and his name. That's what this whole thing is about. It's about appearances, it's about his name. And for her to do that made him look even better. Everything is just so meticulously elaborate. And then I heard that she, Claire will be, when she's out, she will be living with Amber, which was Simon's ex fiance because he's dead, so I guess it's an ex. That makes me think that the Simon thing is really going to come in because I think that that was even above Anthony. So yeah, those are my theories. Um, share yours down there. 
I don't even care about the spoilers because I want to know. So yeah, so I'll put a, a warning in the description for people who don't want to be spoiled. As long as I'm not spoilers for the second book, like serious spoilers more than mine, you know what I mean? Don't tell me that this person killed Simon or this was that or who dared. Just, don't do that. Just let's do the theories, okay? So I'll see you guys later next month, Bookworms Talk, where I probably won't be talking about a psychological thrillery book because my brain hurts. I'll see you guys later. Bye.